Today's show is sponsored by Smart's Give Greatness Contest. Go to coolcutteacher.com forward slash greatness to enter an educator and yourself as the person nominating to win a classroom technology package valued at $40,000. Learn more about the details of this contest at the end of the show. Five reasons to bring esports to your school. Episode 310. The 10 Minute Teacher Podcast with Vicki Davis. Every weekday, you'll learn powerful, practical ways to be a more remarkable teacher today. Today, we're talking with my friend James O'Hagan about five reasons to bring esports to your school. He is an educator in Wisconsin. And recently, James, you and your esports program have been in the Wall Street Journal, USA Today. You've even had a kid who's gotten a scholarship for esports. Now, a lot of our listeners may not know what esports are. So explain what are esports? Very simply, esports is the practice of competitive video games play. So there's the idea of, you know, people play games and play video games. And what we're doing is actually formalizing that into actual competition where teams are formed and kids play video games against other kids, usually at other schools or even across the world. Well, we know that, you know, isolation can be a problem for some kids traditionally in the stereotypical video gaming. So this is really moving past that. And today we're going to talk about five reasons to consider esports for your school. Does one of your reasons have to do with socialization? And could you give it to us? Sure. So, and this is what I've heard from parents and, and teachers too, is they worry that kids playing video games, what they do is they tend to go into their rooms when they get home, lock the doors, and then not connect with anybody except for those in their virtual gaming worlds. And what we're doing is actually saying, well, let's take let's take the interest of the child and let's re- package that in a way where we can say, let's play a game all together. So there's socialization there. You're actually going to form a team. You're actually going to form relationships with other people in the physical sense, as well as a virtual sense. And then we're going to say too, hey, in order to be a really good gamer, you can't just sit there and eat Cheetos and drink Red Bull all afternoon. We have to incorporate some kind of weight training, some kind of yoga breathing, some kind of aerobic activity to best prepare your brain for these games. So you actually have a team that does well at your school, right? What are some of the esports that they play? So esports, think of that as the, um, that's the big umbrella term. So when we think of sports, you go under that umbrella and you'll think baseball, basketball, football, for example. Under esports, the game names are a little different. So you'll have a game called League of Legends, which is one of the most popular esports games in the world. You'll have a game like Rocket League, which is another popular game across the world. It's two teams of of rocket cars hitting a soccer ball back and forth. There's a game called Hearthstone, which is very much kind of like uh, Pokemon. So using electronic cards and, and strategy in those sense. So those are some of the more popular games that people play in schools. Awesome. Okay, so what's our second reason considering esports in our school? Sure. So esports also allows us to redefine our athletic culture. So recently, National High School Federation, it's like an organization for the athletic departments across the United States said, hey, it's time for us to start recognizing esports as something you need to incorporate at a statewide level into your high school athletic programs and recognize this as athletics. And what it's doing is, again, it's drawing in students who we would never draw in before necessarily into athletics or activities even. And statistically speaking, there's about 15 million students in the United States. Three million of those students don't act to actively participate in anything in their schools. So what we're going to say then is let's give them another opportunity, another reason to get engaged in schools. Because when we redefine the athletic culture in that sense and say, yes, let's bring in gamers. Now those are the kids who sometimes, like I said, would not identify with school activities or school culture. And now they're going to be more likely to attend all their classes and have a GPA over 3.0 and be better readers and better math uh, mathematicians. So uh, redefining your athletic culture, now you're almost creating what's called a scholar gamer. And I prefer that term really over a esports athlete. That's a term I used to use. But when you think about a scholar gamer, it's now somebody who's not just playing a game because the game is just the medium into something more. The game now becomes a pathway for students to, again, connect socially, but also to connect into the 
the other things that are necessary to run a quality esports program, such as we want to be able to have our students um, broadcast the matches to the world on a platform such as Twitch, which is a video streaming platform that's owned by Amazon, but is a popular gaming platform. We want those kids to also to connect um, by creating the uh, shirts, the jerseys that they wear on uh, while playing their sports. It allows them to really diversify their opportunities beyond just playing the game. I'm a terrible gamer, Vicky. I'm probably <laughs> one of the, I Me am too. <laughs> the, I'm the person you don't want on the team, but I'm the one who will say and go to bat for these kids and say, this is important and it's not just about the game. So we're redefining that athletic culture in our schools. Yeah. And in some ways it's almost a third because I love this concept of a scholar gamer and understanding that this is just so much more. Okay. I'm excited to get our third. Diversifying opportunities for student participation. It's not, again, the, the game is just the medium to get us into, into other things. So by diversifying our student opportunities for participation, you're again, knocking down that barrier that may keep a, a child from wanting to be part of a team or a sport or activity in their school. And hopefully then that connects them into the school in ways that that raises our overall academic standing. Oh, that's incredible. Okay, what's our fourth? So the, the other big one, is, and this kind of goes to about cre creating a, a diverse opportunity for kids, is increasing collegiate scholarship pathways. Three years ago, Vicki, when we did this podcast before and we talked about esports, there was one school in the United States that started offering a scholarship, and that was Robert Morris University in Chicago. In fact, one of our students here in Racine, Wisconsin, from Racine Unified School District, just earned a $6,000 a year scholarship to play esports, to play League of Legends at Robert Morris University right wow. down the road from us. And that connection came from a tournament that the school participated in down in Chicago. Conversations were had and the child was then pursued to be an esports athlete with this team. If we didn't have that team, that opportunity wouldn't have existed for any of our students. So nowadays, Vicki, you're going to be surprised to hear this. We've gone in three years from having one school that offers a scholarship to 69 schools as of today that are offering scholarships scholarships for students on an average scholarship amount of $7,000 a year. Wow. In fact, in fact, the University of California, Berkeley just announced the other day that they're setting up an intramural program for esports at Berkeley with there's going to be possible scholarship opportunities for approximately $1,500 just for intramurals for kids too. So there's a ton of opportunity and what they've schools have figured out is these are students that may, they may not ha attract in the past. So Robert Morris was not is not a very big school when you look at the state of, of, of Illinois and in Chicago, there's a lot of opportunity and choices there. And they really needed something to diversify and, and bring in these these students that they weren't getting before, because these kids are going to be AP and IP focused. They're going to have higher GPAs. They're going to have interest in STEM related fields. That's what the data shows us. So this collegiate scholarship pathway is very important, not just for the students, but it's also important for the college to embrace and they really have. So you're telling me that the data says if you want to attract more people in the STEM fields that esports is a highway to pump them into your university or your school. Correct. And in fact, I don't want to downplay the importance of these scholarships because you know, $6,000 a year for some people they say, well that doesn't sound like a whole lot of money. It's not a full ride. And that's true, it's not, but it's something that that can sway a decision. In fact, the University of California at Irvine, their average scholarship is $15,000 a year. Wow. What's our fifth? These are some pretty powerful reasons here. Vicki, one of the things that I am a big proponent of, and it, this goes from my days of being an elementary school teacher, I think more so, but I think it's so important at the high school. This is playing games. This is so important. We have become schools that are so focused on the academic needs of our of our kids to raise test scores and try to pair, prepare them for college and career ready. And it, there just comes a point where we just have to not forget the importance of play. And this is taking play that kids are loving to do already. They're already engaging in it and saying, let's make play part of school again, especially at the high school level. Wow, you're you're blowing my mind. You know, you did when we when we talked three years ago, but it really seems like esports are taking off, aren't they? Yeah. And 
The great thing about all this really is, Vicki, is that, that a lot of schools can get started today. We've already made the investments in a lot of ways with internet access to our schools. We usually already have the computers that we need. And a game like League of Legends, which is completely free for anybody to download across the world, is five on five live action chess. And it is something that is very easy to get started with. It's the most popular esports game in the United States. I will say, though, that if you focus on just the game and just start it, you just say, I want to have esports just so my kids can play games. You're missing out on a much bigger opportunity if you don't realize it already. It sounds like it. And, and let me just out of curiosity, is this attracting mm. men and women equally or are we how, what kind of mix are we seeing with with diversity? Unfortunately, Vicki, that there has been some glaring problems with the diversity, and it's something that I'm starting to focus on personally. So what there has been, there was recent research that was done that showed most of the people who are coming into esports games are are white males or Asian males. There's because the the market is so PC driven, not console. When I say console, I mean like an Xbox or a PlayStation. Those tend to lean towards Latino or African American kids versus PC games, which are more towards Asian and white kids. And so there's definitely some racial divides that we need to address when we're talking about our esports teams, and we can't ignore that. We all also should definitely not ignore women in this field as well, too, because these teams, as we set them up, are meant to be gender neutral. I have seen some very good female gamers, just as I've seen some very good African-American and Latino gamers, but I don't feel we're really doing enough to draw them in because this is an industry that by the year 2020 is going to grow to be a $1.5 billion industry across the world. And it isn't like, and as I said, the gaming is really nice, but it's all the other things that become possible through this. Um, I have a contact, a friend who works at Twitch, and a lot of these kids who are getting jobs at places like Riot Games, Blizzard Games, all the ancillary businesses, they're getting their start by playing these games, but making these connections at colleges and universities and businesses through tournaments, and then getting picked up out of high school or even college to take these jobs at these gaming companies. And as I said, as this industry is growing, we've got to have open doors for everybody to get into it. And I love the concept that you you said again, I'll say it again, the scholar gamer, that it's yes. more than just gaming. I think this is fascinating. Uh, do take a look at the show notes and follow James O'Hagan. He's really been a pioneer in esports for for quite some time, and it's really taken off just in its infancy, and it's going to really um, do so much in the next three to five years. If people do want more information, uh, I've started my own podcast, not to compete with yours, Vicki, but... Oh, of course not. Go ahead and mention we're a podcast family. <laughs> sure, yes. Yeah. So uh, they can look up on uh, Apple Podcasts or on SoundCloud, the Academy of Esports podcast. And they can also go to my website. It's, it's T-A-O esports.com. So awesome. that's where they, can get, they can get the podcast there too. Cool. And we will put that in the show notes. Thank you, James. SMART wants to recognize educators across the globe who inspire greatness in their students, peers, or community. Go to coolcatteacher.com forward slash greatness to nominate your favorite educator in recognition of their greatness. Each nominee and nominator will be entered to win a classroom technology package valued at $40,000. So this means the winner and his or her nominee each win a $20,000 package, including one 7,000 series smart board and smart document camera, 30 Chromebooks, and smart training and implementation. Give greatness and and nominate a great educator today. Thank you for listening to the 10-Minute Teacher Podcast. You can download the show notes and see the archive at coolcatteacher.com forward slash podcast. Never stop learning.